Hello and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And I think this proves it once again. This computer will rule the world. Now, as you can see, I'm back here with our good old buddies, Apollo Computing Computers. Firebird, Ice Drake, they have so many names, all the names for their, their, their amazing products. And what we're seeing here is that I am out of monitors, usable monitors. As you know, my uh, Amiga hovel up here, I have a limited amount of space. Uh, normally the Amiga 4000 would be occupying this lovely area here, but we've kind of done all we can with the 4000 for now. Doesn't mean you're never gonna see it again. It just, there's not much more to do with that right now. The Firebird here that's in my Amiga 500, you have not seen this in quite a while. If you're a regular subscriber to the channel, you'll know I did a whole video series on this probably around a year ago, maybe longer. Uh, and, I, and it really, it goes back probably two years if you count my V4 standalone from Apollo. Uh, unfortunately, as we, some of you, again, who watch my videos, know that uh, during one of the Quartus programming uh, flashes, it killed the IDE controller on that. So my standalone is no longer with us. I do have the Firebird though, and the Firebird has been updated to the latest publicly released core. I'm not gonna bother telling what that core is because it's gonna have changed by the time you watch this. So what I will do is in the description below, put a link to that update page where you can go check for yourself. One of the things you can do too over at Apollo is you can register to get into their pre-configured hard drive setup. Now it's not pre-configured meaning they give you everything you need. You have to provide things on your own and like kickstarts and whatnot but it's a whole process you can sign up for and then you have the ability to boot the system uh, into whatever workbench you want so if that sounded like a lot uh, it is just know that you can go register and get access to that stuff so that's why you're seeing a lot of people ask me how did you get workbench 3.2.2 in there go to the website register you'll get access to the stuff and then you can do this too the point of this video is i'm doing a, a manual install of whd load because while, once again, there's all kinds of fun things that can become pre-configured with uh, the installs, this is a pretty stripped down install, so I don't have that on here. And in, I was installing WHD load on my Amiga 600, but I figured, you know what, I need to do it on here as well because I'm doing a little bit of testing. I'm helping uh, another friend out uh, who has one of these installed. You may have heard of him, Chris Edwards, or Chris Edwards Restoration. He has one of these as well for, for a, a client of his or an Amiga user of his that he's doing one of his uh, free pairs on. And so we're gonna try and go back and forth, the two of us, and see about getting, uh, you know, confirming some things that we're finding and making sure everything's working the way it's supposed to work. So what I've done here in my setup is yes, I'm using this janky, tiny little Chinese monitor. This thing, these are great. They're lightweight, they're small. Uh, they have all the inputs you need. They have analog and digital inputs. So they, they're really good like little workhorses for, for panels when you're in a pinch. And then I'm going to be very gentle. Matter of fact, I don't, I don't, I don't even want to touch it. Over here, we have this micro SD extender. And what this does is it runs in here and goes into the Firebirds. So the Firebird has two, tech, well, no, it's got like three hard drives. It's got the IDE connector, and then it has the, the smaller 40 pin or 44 pin compact flash style connector which is what I'm using for the hard drive and then it has a micro SD card slot the micro SD card slot is like its thumb drive so you can do sneaker net right but you really shouldn't hot swap that at all and they also say you shouldn't do what I'm doing which is use an extender okay so what I do is I put the CF the micro SD card you know thing in here not CF micro SD card in here make sure it's all plugged in and then I turn the system on and then use my files, get my files off it. And then when I'm done, or if I need to put more files on this, I turn the system off and pull out the card and go put more files on it. But I don't even like to bump this thing because I'm always terrified that even just bumping it might cause it to freak out over here. Uh, so having said that, uh, once you have used this for the day or whatever you're gonna use it for, turn the system off and just pop the card out and uh, you know, don't, don't deal with it. And that way, if you don't push the SD card, sorry, if you don't push the SD, it's so tiny, I know. Can I get in here? Let's see if we can get in here. Yeah, if you don't push the SD card mount button, it won't mount the SD and you don't have to worry about it. So we don't really need to see the Firebird 
any more down there, do we? Let's, get, let's try and get you a little closer onto what I'm trying to do here. There we go. All right. Sorry for this. <laughs> I know it's not. Uh, I know it's not ideal. Okay, so I'm gonna try not to get in the way. I've got my glasses on. Yeah, my glasses here. So let's first open up. Let's do the first test. So we've got this micro SD card. We're gonna hit the button down here and watch this. Oh, it's already there. No, nope, no, no, it's not. I gotta push the button down here. So smash this. Pop. See, SD zero pops up. All right, so we've got my storage partition. So what my storage partition is, when you go onto the website and you register and you, and you get the thing to install the, uh, the operating collection system, whatever you're seeing here, it's gonna generate a single hard drive partition, like a DH0. And in my case, it came up with um, uh, an SF0 partition or something. I know that's another one of the, I guess, more newer robust file systems, but you have to run an expanding tool. I've made videos on this before in the past, but keep in mind my videos are old. So if you want to go back and look at my old Firebird videos just to watch them for, you know, for fun, you can, but keep in mind some of the, a lot of the info in there might be out of date. So I'll, again, go use a link in the description, go to the website and read up on everything there. But you have to run an expander tool to let the uh, initial install know that, hey, I have a much bigger hard drive because the initial install does like 512 meg partition. And if you have like an eight gig compact flash card or a 32 gig compact flash card, it doesn't, that's it, it doesn't see any of the rest of it. So you run their expander tool, which allows you to now use HD toolbox to create partitions and have fun. And that's what I've done. I've created this storage partition. And by the way, again, in one of my old videos, there was a whole bunch of hoops and loops you had to jump through to get hard drives partitioned. But from what I can tell with this latest core and with this uh, boot solo install, you just use HD toolbox, the, the Mega HD toolbox. And it, I was able to create a, a fast file system partition, the storage drive, this DH1, and it works great. Well, it works great, meaning I could put files in and out, but what we're gonna do now is torture test it. We're gonna go from our SD0 through this long adapter thingy into the compact flash DH1 partition. So it's gonna take a while to copy. This is a lot of files, but this will also be a good test. This is also gonna help our buddy uh, Chris over there, because I think he was having some issues with long file copies or trying to move data in and off the CF card was causing issues. So this would be one test we can try. If we get past this hurdle and it works great, then we'll move to the next phase, which is installing WHD load and actually trying to play uh, a game off of it from that DH1. So there's a couple ways we can do the file copy. The fastest way is to use shell. I could just open this up and drag the files into there. That's gonna be the slowest way. Even with the modern updates that's done with the progress bar to cancel it, I still like to use shell because it's just quick. All right, it's been a while since I've done the old shell command. So as you can see, it's a copy. I just did copy SD0 uh, to DH1. And then after that, it's space all. So now it's gonna go through and rip through and copy all of these files. Hopefully not freeze up or crash or do anything weird. Uh, if it does, it's not a disaster. The compact flash is partitioned and we can always just re reformat the uh, DH1 if it gets weird. So uh, let's see how this goes. And we're back. Uh, it did take a while. <laughs> I won't lie, but it didn't take a long while. It just took a while. But the good news is it copied all the files and uh, it didn't crash or lock up or anything. So let me squeeze in here again. And let me get my glasses on so I can see. Not a really big prescription, but it's enough. And let's see what kind of disaster I created when I did this copy all. So if we go down here to files, little good old dupus. Sure enough, there is stuff in there. Good. Stuff is good. Now, I thought I saw a WHD load was already installed in this. All right. This is, uh, so I'm going to have to forewarn you, though. Some of you might have figured this out if you are familiar with these little monitors. They're not Amiga compatible. They don't do 15 kilohertz. And the core I am running on this vampire, so if you listen to me earlier and you do go into the description and go to their uh, website, Palo Computing, you will see that they, um, they have sent out newsletters and they are currently working on an alpha version of the core, a beta version of the core that supports flicker fixer output. Meaning uh, if you enter a, an Amiga mode, like a 15 kilohertz mode, uh, you can use standard monitors like, like this one, like uh, this is using HDMI right now. So uh, it would be flicker fixed so that it would be compatible with conventional displays. So DVI, VGA, and uh, HDMI that don't support 15 kilohertz. So 
what's going to happen is if this works, the screen's going to go blank because the Amiga game is going to launch or demo is going to launch and so drop us down to 15 kilohertz. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. As you can see, things have changed here for a second. I'm kind of cutting in, all right? I might just cut this in and roll with it from here forward, or I might cut back to what I shot earlier. Either way, you're gonna see what you're gonna see, right? So as you can see, we're using a real monitor now instead of that little dinky thing. That was introducing way too many weird things, okay? And what you're gonna notice is we are running in a four by three aspect. That's because I have the Saga driver or the RTG version of the Apollo set to 800 by 600, or actually 1024 by 768, I'm sorry. I did finally figure out I am running core 9463, which is the release core. And yes, that core does include, as far as I can tell, flicker fixer ability. Now it's very, very early flicker fixer ability. It's kind of weird how it's sort of working. So I'm gonna try and show you this. I'm also going to show you the issue I'm having with my DH1 as described before. I did get some more curiosities out of this. So as you can see here, this is my DH1 uh, partition and this flashback is from that DH1 partition. Now watch what happens when I run flashback. Okay, Immediately as before, the read error pops up in the corner. So I hit cancel and it says DOS error 3 data level 3.SPL preloading ignore. That disappears, this goes away. Now once again, sorry, still don't have sound because when you're using the AGA or advanced Ember chipset mode, you don't get audio out of the Amiga anymore. You have to get audio through HDMI. So as you can see, this is an Amiga native 15 kilohertz screen working with a non Amiga monitor. This is not a, an Amiga compatible display. It absolutely does not work with 15 kilohertz. What you're also seeing is it kind of flashing to black and then occasionally a white bar. There you go on the bottom. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So this flicker fixer is kind of doing its thing, but yeah, you're seeing these kind of weird, weird things happen as it, as it goes through. It almost looks like a buffer's filling up and then it's like having to clear it right there. See, it's like a draw on the screen. It almost looks like the white bar is getting bigger and bigger and slowly going up the screen and then it resets. It's very strange, very strange. But as you can see, I'm loading WHD load from my DH1 partition. I press the start button and you're like, is it going to do anything? Should it, when you press the start button, shouldn't it do like that cool animated thing? It does, but it didn't here for some reason. But it is starting. And here we go. We're in the game. And I can move around, do the little fall, and then we can do the old run and jump. I'm terrible at. Boink, and I screwed it up. This is being flicker fixed. It looks really clean, by the way. It looks super clean. I mean, very impressive. And while I'm playing the game, at least, it's not doing the crazy weird white flash thing. Now I can't shoot, so I'm gonna die here. I'll try and run off screen, because I can't remember how to do the damn, the dang gun. So let me come back off screen. Jump, there we go. Okay, so it looks like, it looks like when the Amiga's animation or the refresh of the screen hits like a certain threshold, you start seeing that black flash and the white flash happen. So there's definitely like a movement threshold that triggers it. Anyway, we'll quit that. So that's loading from DH1. So we'll go to Shadow of the Beast, fire this up, do no cache. And again, get the same error, ignore, ignore, ignore. So that goes away. I'm like, okay, just like before, are we gonna work here? And no, so that's from DH1. And if I try to quit, it doesn't work. It's just like, I'm done, I'm just, Ba boom it's done so i have to actually reboot so that's the issue of playing whd load from amiga file system partitions the dh1 is a standard file system set to directory cache mode or set to long file name support and i can copy files to it you saw me copy all those files to it i can copy files off of it so for example here we're going to go back to storage we're going to open up the ram disk and we're going to copy shadow the beast to ram so see, I can very quickly move files off it. No crash, no weirdness. Go over here, run beast again, turn on no cache. And look, no errors pop up, no can't read file, can't preload. It's just doing normal WHD load stuff, playing from RAM. If I copy W, if I copy that file to the, the DH0, same result, it works. And look at this, perfectly flicker-free Shadow of the Beast intro now. And it looks great. Of course, we'd have the amazing music playing right now. 
but unfortunately uh, I don't have the audio. But you can see here it works. Now you're still going to get the, the, the flicker fixer issues with the white bar because again, this is the early, early version of the flicker fix capability, but I just want to show you everything like always. So this, I can even quit it, it's fine. So yeah, I can either, you can try and run games from a, an Amiga uh, file system partition. It might work, like you saw with Flashback, and then other times it just won't work. It just doesn't work at all. But if you copy these games to RAM disk, and in this case we have a lot of RAM, 512 megabytes, so it's not completely impractical. Or if you copy it to the DH0 or the sys drive, it'll run with no problem. So that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to cut in and say, yes. And by the way, I am familiar. If you go to the personal folder and you go to games, they've included speedball here. If you click on here and you go to the info and the icon, I kind of thought maybe they were doing some weird hacks. Like you see all this execute post all this like Apollo control stuff up here. I also went through and copied this and pasted it into all of the other games and tried to do everything I just showed you. Run from DH1, and this up here, adding this code, didn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. All right, so that's it. I'm gonna uh, cut back to my uh, other footage. But we did confirm what we wanted to confirm. First off, yes, I can copy a ton of files to the DH1 and it works. I can extract LHA files from it and it works. However, WHD load doesn't work. It, it's giving you that weird error. There's some kind of timing issue possibly that's, that's sensitive to WHD load. I don't know. But if you copy those games to the DH0, they, they run. Now they run at the wrong aspect ratio. Again, if anybody knows, awesome. But I think that's gonna do it for now. And uh, we're not, we haven't seen the last of the Firebird in the 500. This is an ongoing kind of refresher because they've changed a lot of things uh, in, in Firebird land, Apollo computing land, they've updated the cores all across the board and added a lot of new fun stuff. So uh, I will be coming back to this, but I just wanted to have you uh, sit with me and go through this little testing thing. Uh, and I hope this also helps out my buddy, Chris. Thanks for watching. I'm done with this video.